Hello and welcome to another video. So if you saw my previous video on the uh, overnight spring camp, the minimalist camp, you'll have likely seen this particular setup here. Now, this is a setup that I've developed over the course of 10 years that I've been involved in bushcraft and camping. So it is still not perfect, but it does the job. So, if you're interested in seeing what's inside this kit and how I set, and the mentality behind how I set up my bushcraft kit and what to take on a bushcraft camp, keep watching. So here we have everything from the inside and outside of the pack, all spread out. Now, whenever I'm going out for a hike or for a camp or anything else, I go about packing for that systematically the same way every time, thinking about key categories and then making sure I have all of the items to fulfill those needs. So the categories I use are shelter, so for me, shelter doesn't just mean tarp and tent, it means sleep system, it means um, rain outerwear, it means anything from boots to so on, anything that protects you from the elements. So shelter, then I'll look at tools, like what tools do I need to fulfill the job? What tools can I carry on the trip that I'm going? What tools will I need? Now the tools. Then I go over into fire and cooking. So this I don't really count as part of the kit because every bag that I have has, has a fire lighted kit in this and this particular fire steel will stay in the pocket of my trousers 98% of the time. So I always have a method of fire on me. So fire, but if I'm at a, on a campsite that doesn't allow open fires, it might be a gas stove, it might be a small twig burner, it might be a kelly kettle, it might be anything that allows me to cook on, heat water, boil water, heat up food, so on, fire. And then it transitions into cooking. Now these are the all of the utensils and cookware that I need to prepare the food that I'm carrying with me. So that'll also vary and where I go. Then we go to hygiene and first aid. So two essentials keep you, so for everyday needs and in case of emergencies. Then we go into admin and lighting. So they are pack battery bank, um, if I'm taking a Kindle worth, if I'm taking maps, thing for navigation, notepad, lighting, so it could be a head torch, could be just a torch, could be a, a lantern. There we go. So then we've got shelter, tools, fire, cooking, hygiene, first hygiene and first aid, admin and lighting. Now, the final two categories would be water and food. So I've got water as part of my cook kit and then food will just end up being part of it. So let's start with shelter. First thing we've got, shelter, and this travels in the bag all times. So actually the majority of the kit in the center here is, it's probably worth mentioning that it travels with me pretty much all the time. I usually have this basic set inside this bag all day every day when I've 
and this bag comes with me whenever I go out and do any sort of bushcraft so whether it's on my own leading a group away on a camp the contents of the bag pretty much stays the same get into that in a bit so DD super life top okay so that's shelter from the elements from the top spare cordage so extensions for ridge lines so on lashings tripods it's useful to have Rain trousers, I very rarely use these because in the woods you don't tend to get the size where it's rain, but when you need it, you do really need it. Then, move on to my sleep roll. Now this is everything I need to, sl to spend the night in the woods from a sleep point of view. So in there, I've got my sleeping bag, I've got my roll mat, got a pillow, sleeping bag liner, and it's all wrapped up in a bivy bag. This is the part that I'm still adjusting and working on. Because the, the whole concept behind the way I set up the kit with this on the outside is that this is my, my core kit lives in there. So if I want to do a quick overnighter, all I need to do is take this bedroll and just tie it to the bottom. It doesn't look that great, it's a bit unwieldy, it's not, doesn't keep the sleeping bag protected the best, but for just get out the door, quick overnighter, uh, after work, something like that, this is the system that I found that works best at the moment. Rather than transferring all of it into a bigger rucksack where everything could fit inside, this just allows me to grab one bag, one bedroll and go. Then, moving on to tools. For tools, it is really the trinity. You've got knife, axe, and saw. You can change out the axes, uh, change out the size of some of these tools, and so on, but I think for most of the stuff that we do in the UK, apart from if you're getting really into the north of Scotland, this is the kit that you should have for tools. So we've got Husqvarna Axe. We've got a Heli Temagami knife. That doesn't want to fit in, back in its sheath. Okay. And then we've got a Silky Outback folding saw. These are my work tools. It's nice having an axe this size so that I can actually fit it inside the bag if I'm traveling in certain areas where I don't want to um, be visibly carrying axe or knife. And again, folding saw can fit in a pocket. I can travel, I can be walking around camp, I can be walking around the area and I have a saw on me. As I said, fire steel always in the pocket. Not going to go in depth on hygiene. That's for you personally. If you want me to take a deeper look into what's in my hygiene first aid kits, no. Nope, but basically, I've got a small towel in there. Got uh, a wash bowl. Got some soap. Um, got some hand gel. Got some toilet paper. Just all the stuff. Toothbrush, toothpaste, all the stuff you need to. Keep, keep standards of hygiene up when you're away on a trip. Then I have Black Diamond Storm Head Torch. Absolutely brilliant little bit of kit. Um, I really do like the Black Diamond Head Torches. They're very solid. They, they have a nice lock function so you can lock the button so that you not, don't accidentally press it in your backpack and then end up with a flat battery. Very handy. Uh, this was a bit of a luxury item, but got the UCO candle lantern. It's just really, really nice to have a bit of a flame in the evening to read by. I quite like the, to be honest, it doesn't kill your um, night vision. 
So it's a bit of a luxury. I wouldn't call it a necessity. If you've got a head torch, you don't really need a lantern. But it's something that I use a fair amount just because I like it. Then here, I've got my journal, battery bank, and some spare cables. So there's my writing in the rain notepad in there. So I can make notes, keep a journal, and record anything I find or discover. Moving on to cooking system. So this doesn't always travel with me. I, I do like to keep it around, but this is my proper going away set. This is a set that will travel with me percent of the time. This will fit nicely nesting in the side pocket of the thingy. So in there I've got a Tatonka stainless steel cup, a Glog stainless steel bottle, and then a generic Amazon stainless steel cooking pot. So as we use all these together I can boil water, drink coffee and tea, and generally keep myself hydrated and comfortable. You don't really need any more than this, but sometimes it's nice to have a frying pan, which is in this bag here. So I got an MSR frying pan, which has in one of these pockets, a handle that just slots on like that. Okay, got a frying pan, chopping board. Now these double as plates, me. So when you're going really minimalist, it's and you're cooking directly on the coals or on a stick, it gets a bit messy eating. So it's nice to have pot and pan. You could do without these, but just, yeah, it's still minimal. Then I also have a spork. This is to accompany my sheath knife. There we go, knife and fork and spoon, all of the tools you need for eating. It's nice to have a separate set of cutlery, but if you're really paring things down, then you can just go with a straight fork and your belt knife. So, there you have it. That is my essentials setup for a bushcraft wild camp. Everything that you need to be able to live in the wilderness. It does, it is missing some items that will allow you to stay out for longer, such as methods of sharpening and repairing tools, um, certain specialist uh, tools like a crook knife or an awl, but in general it'll do for getting started or for those minimalist camps where you can expect to be out for a couple of days at the most. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.